Well, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the usual panelists on the Next Level podcast, the publisher of The Bulwark, Cyril Longwell. <laughs> and New York Times bestselling author, Tim Miller. Hey, everybody. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guy, that's going to be a hard act to follow. Boy, yeah. Willie, his, his bio seems a little bit more accomplished than mine, you know? I feel like, I feel like we should be switching seats. He, he's, had, he's had a little bit more time to put things together. I okay, guess. so in the time that we have, yeah, by the way, uh, welcome. Hey, Charlie. Thank you. Can you I just warn you about something yeah, before please. you get the first would you, question? Would you please? I, just, yeah. I do. Um, I just, yeah. I'm a little worried that the crowd's not going to like my answers tonight because I've been reflecting on my ideology. I, I read, uh, <laughs> I was reading Osama bin Laden's letter to America. <laughs> And it really that. opened my eyes. It really opened my eyes to some things. He was making some good points. I told points. you, he spends too much time on TikTok. This is the problem. Oh, okay. He's been have, making I, some I good to, points. I have to tell you, see, I, I just have so much brain bandwidth, <laughs> and I have not worried about TikTok yeah. literally until this morning. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. He's just, he's making a lot of good points, and I don't know. See, well, what's interesting is the people who read this, you know, and, and particularly like on the, on the weird right, and go, you know, he's right about the decadence of America, you know, and globalism and everything. Instead of thinking, what the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> they go, no, maybe Osama bin Laden had a mm. point there. So, okay, so we, we have to dive into the most important stories of the day. Is it about right. the woman who's right there wearing a Sarah's Always Right shirt? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thank you for being here. I noticed she was preparing to flash it, so she, <laughs> she had, the, she had a under, underneath, underneath yeah. the jacket. Okay, so uh, in case you, you have not caught up on the news today, George Santos um, <laughs> had a bad day. He's announcing he's not running for re-election. We will not have him to kick around anymore. After the House Ethics Committee came up with, I don't even know where to begin, Tim. I mean, Sarah, I don't even know where to begin. with, with OnlyFans? <laughs> Well, I, uh, it's, how, it's, it's, it's how I supplement my bulwark, my meager bulwark salary that you're paying me. <laughs> Someday there'll be a YouTube clip saying, and everyone thought he was joking. <laughs> At that I think George was one of my subscribers, it turns out. <laughs> okay, so I, I, I'll give it away. My favorite part of this, I would have said the fact that George Santos actually spent the money on, on a porn site, but... Tim, it wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. It was the, the fact that he was spending campaign money on Botox. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could kind of argue in court, maybe that is a campaign expense. You know, he wanted to put his best face forward yeah. to the people of the district. You know, maybe they wanted him up. to be his best he was, self. He, was, he spends more money at Sephora than I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't say. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> what does um, a boy do with makeup? Uh, well, you know, I think he's been oranging himself a little yeah. bit to go after the boss and uh, yeah, I mean, under very eye. Very skin like a baby's bottom. Yeah, yeah he does have very... I, I, thought it was, I thought it was... Okay, I'm Skin I'm looks very soft. It's been working. Whatever it's doing, it's working for okay, him. Okay, because we live in the age we live in, I always want to know... You thought so he was what? handsome. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Can we just... This is not back? true. This is uh, ridiculous. Okay. Okay. All right, all right. What? Uh, when, when George Santos first what? came on the this scene... Is, this is a fly. Clearly, you're not a next level, loyal next level listener. What? When he first came on the scene, Sarah was like, I, is, I think he's kind of cute. <laughs> this happened. It happened. <laughs> And me you and Vivian were like, what? There's like collared shirts with sweaters over them, which as you know is also a fashion choice I like to make. Yeah. And so I thought, he, he, he looks worse now than he did back then. This is not nice. We should stop okay. talking about his appearance, actually. Uh, no, I think he's dropping out he's to run for president. Does. Okay, yeah, wait. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's got bigger ambitions. See, no, we're always surprised by the thing. That person's done now. I mean, they are completely toast. So what is he going to be? I think it's even chance he runs for president or becomes a spokesman for what? Botox. Yeah, Ferragamo. I don't think Ferragamo is interested in that. No, I him. think Sephora is going to take a pass on him. Yeah, only fans. Al although, if they also listen to probably. this and realize women like Sarah, pa uh, Sarah Palin. Yeah, the lesbian. Sarah, women market. like Sarah Longwell. Oh, Actually, Palin. Thank you. Nice. Kind of yeah, that was bad. That was. <laughs> yeah, I, he might be going to jail. Um, oh, well. <laughs> so I think that might be his first stop. I don't think he'd do that one. Never mind. Okay, I, no, I'm, I, I think we definitely need to move on right, right away. <laughs> okay, the other story of the day, of course, is uh, the conviction of David DePape, um, mm. the, 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 the crazed lunatic who uh, attacked Nancy Pelosi's husband with a, a, a hammer. I, the only reason I'm bringing this up is, you know, for the people who think that, you know, that 
ideas do not matter, that, I, that, that words do not have consequences. I mean, here is somebody who was radicalized online, who was radicalized um, on, on, on Fox News, and you see how it played out. And yet I kind of still feel that we're in denial about how many bizarre people like that are out there. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the big thing that shocks me is that Trump, it's part of Trump's stump speech yeah. to talk about this guy, like as a joke. Like, it's funny that this guy broke into the house and beat him unconscious with a hammer and was looking for Nancy Pelosi to do it to her. That doesn't seem that funny. It's not funny at all. And yet you're right. It has become a part of his standard stump speech. And I suppose for the hundredth time, we should say, you know, but it doesn't seem to matter. I mean, you know, I, I guess I am old enough, and I think, Tim, you probably are as well, to remember when <laughs> someone... Well, he's so youthful looking, I just, I never know. I'm waiting to hear what you're going to reference. No, I, I guess, if I'm when, when, when a, a, a politician made a joke about a near fatal attack on a senior citizen, that that would be a problem. Yeah, constant jokes, actually, like relentless jokes. It wasn't just, and it's not just Trump, even. I, I think it just shows the way that he's corrupted the party, right? It trickles, it trickles down. Uh, you know, people are making jokes about him uh, online. I saw Blake Masters make a joke out about him when I went to cover it, um, Arizona. So, no, I, I think that is really gross. I, uh, the other interesting observation about this, I liked, I don't know if you saw Pelosi. Pelosi kind of gave the pro Hamas protester kids, the what for the mm -hmm. other day, mm -hmm. uh, um, which I appreciated. And, uh, and she was like, uh, and by the way, I, you know, the people that are protesting out, outside my house day and night, I do know what your guys' opinions are. It's the same house that was broken into when my husband was attacked. I was like, girl. Was like, she, was really, she was really giving it to him, which I liked that. But I, the, the most interesting thing, uh, really, to me, just because the Trump, Trump being a piece of crap, like, like News at 11, right? Uh, but uh, the most interesting thing to me is, is the character, the person that is, that is DePap, uh, because he was a Berkeley nudist, right? And so when this first popped up, like that social media presence of him as being like a far left nudist was, was the origin of why Elon Musk and all these far right guys were like, this is, a, this is an op, you know, he was probably Paul's lover. And like, that's what was the origin really? of all that, right? They looked at it like, this guy couldn't be a far right guy. But it's like, no, actually, he, he is, and this is not that unusual, right, that we see these far left, the far left extremists that uh, over the course of Trump, over the course of the vaccines, uh, you know, over the course of COVID, ha have now kind of hopped the horseshoe and, 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 uh, and, are, and have been radicalized far right. Now, not all of them are going to go attack a politician over it, but like, this is a trend that I think uh, says a lot about where our politics is going in addition to being a sad story. I want to tell a story really quickly. Okay, so I uh, had like a shoulder thing and somebody was like, go see a massage therapist. I've never seen a massage therapist, so I Googled massage therapist near me Ooh. and like ended up in some like random basement somewhere uh, in like Silver Spring. And uh, this woman immediately came out and she was very excited and she gave me a crystal to hold in one hand and like a volcanic rock in the other. Told me to like put the volcanic rock on my shoulder and uh, the whole thing was real weird and she's talking to me through the whole thing, just never, just talking, 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 Ask me what I do and so I'm trying to be vague, uh, <laughs> whatever. And, but I sort of say I'm in politics, whatever. Anyway, I, and because she was late, we had exchanged text messages as I was trying to find her. Uh -oh. After I left, she must have Googled me and she sent me a bunch of text messages that says, go Republicans, yay. So I was like, you didn't read very closely, but fine. <laughs> and then it was also like, this is what they need to be focused on. And it was just like QAnon link after yeah. like their pedo pedophile ring link. Pedo and I was like, this is the, this is the, the loop. Right. Oh man. Okay, since we're on Googling uh, <laughs> stories. So a couple of years ago I was uh, in Aspen, um, actually at a conference with Mona Charon. You all know Mona, right? Oh yeah, we love and, Mona. And I was concerned about allergies, so I, so I Googled drugstore. And that's why I have a picture of Mona Sharon and I standing in front of Aspen's most successful pot store. <laughs> <laughs> mm. did, she, okay. did she dabble in the gummies um, at all? I, we just you got to be careful sorry, with the what gummies. What happens at Aspen stays you in gotta Aspen. Just, you <laughs> oh, oh, got to okay, be careful so, with the gummies. Okay, I, again, uh, breaking news at 11, Elon Musk is a total asshole. Um, but he did cross a line yesterday, at least I think he did, you know, when, he, when he tweeted out just this, this vile anti-Semitic, I mean, just pure Jew hate, um, um, huge backlash, and so I, without saying yes, it's terrible. Of course, it's terrible. Sarah, let's put this in some context. 
how important is Elon Musk to the, 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 the right-wing movement? Because I, I was thinking this morning, and I wrote this in, in, in Morning Shots, it was last October that the House uh, Judiciary Committee, the House Republican Judiciary Committee, uh, Jim Jordan, put out that, I, I forget what the order was, Elon, Trump, Kanye, or Kanye, Elon. This was their trinity. These were the inspirations. These were the, the, you know, the three worthies that were gonna lead them up to the great uplands. Uh, and we know what happened to Kanye West, but Musk is, 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 was on that list. How Just, important is he? Well, actually, can I, of yeah. those three people, all three of them, I mean, Trump dined then with Kanye, yes. as well as Nick Fuentes. Yeah, uh, so Nazi, all, actual yeah, Nazi. Kanye's a, a really committed anti-Semite. So aren't all three of them, at this point, pretty confirmed anti-Semites, or at least? Trump, just more Trump, like, Trump has a lot of Jewish friends. Yeah. He uses to count his money. That's, yeah. So he's not anti-Semitic. That's just, that's just what he that's says. That's almost he's a direct like, quote from Trump, though. That's <laughs> yeah. the problem. Yeah. You know, actually, so when at the, we just did a show in New Orleans like three weeks ago. It feels like it, but I think it might have been last week. Tim made me drink something <laughs> called Purple Drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why we think it was, that's why our memory's a little off. Uh, but you interviewed Walter Isaacson, who mm -hmm. had just written the book, that's you know, right. on Elon. And like, Walter kind of did this thing where he's like, yeah, Elon, he, yeah, he's an asshole. And I was just like, no. what an understatement. Like the extent to which this person now has, I'm trying to think about what a corollary would be from history, but I guess it's like a Rockefeller or something like that, um, who ends up, although it's different too, because yeah. he both has tremendous cultural power now. And Henry Ford. Luce, no, maybe. No, there's I mean, no, Luce there's was no normal, but like, yeah. yeah, right. But somebody who controls a media outlet, right? Controls a media outlet, okay. and he's like the person our government depends on yeah. to like do the next frontier in space and also the, rec the Ukrainians are counting on for internet to fight their this war. This all seems very relevant. Yeah. Yes. Uh, one man should not have that much power. We, I, we have got to figure out, I think. And then, you know, we have watched, um, yeah. I guess IBM pulled out, pulled out of Twitter, like, you know, Tesla stock. <clears throat> but this has happened before where like, it's, I thought, I think, do you think the, Twitter stock is down to five billion, which means that he has robbed it of thirty-nine billion dollars worth of value. It's an amazing achievement. It huh. is an amazing achievement for one man. I'm not a good businessman, but I've never lost thirty-nine bills. So <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I look. I, this is um, this was one of the topics that I, I discussed with uh, Arizona Governor Carrie Lake this week. I don't know if you, <laughs> you saw that. <laughs> Why are you touching me? So on my shirt, please. On the not skin to skin. Um, we can hug after, it's fine. It was just her, she was bad. You know how there's a good touch and a bad touch? She has bad touch. She invaded your space. She invaded my space. Anyway, it was one of the topics we talked about was at the, at the beginning was, you know, she, uh, like they, they, they continue, Elon and her and everyone in this world, you know, Ben Shapiro continues to talk about how, you know, conservative speech, there's this great threat to conservative speech out there and people are being silenced and Elon needed to own Twitter so that, the, these, so that this speech would not be in threat. And it's like, like if you want to be an anti-Semitic freak, like this is the best time in world history. Yeah. Right? Well, to, to have the best time, I think but so. it's like coming in a hard second right now. <laughs> um, I, I would have your, have your thoughts heard, maybe not to act on them. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, he is out there replying and elevating the weirdest people on the internet. That's yes. one thing to be like, I want to own this, and I, and I just, I think that everybody should be able to say what they want, right, and I, and, I, and I support free speech, which he doesn't actually, he shuts people down in other countries. It'd be one thing to do that, but he's not doing that. He's like, I'm going to find the most vile and weirdest people yes. on the entire platform, and then I'm going to force them into everybody else's feed. I mean, like, that is the thing that's extremely... You know, concerning, and we had um, what was it? The uh, uh, it was one of the hearings this week with Christopher Ray. I don't know, did you see this uh, with the guy Clay Higgins? He's talking about the oh ghost buses. This yeah. conspiracy. He's talking about this yeah. conspiracy yeah. with the ghost buses. He's like, they were there on January sixth, and it was like the Antifa and the FBI and Scooby Doo, and they're all on the bus together, <laughs> and they were, they were forcing the great patriots to charge yeah. the building. And it's like, what the? What are you? And Chris Ray is like, what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> anyway, after that. Like that, that conspiracy, which is so insane, it's, it's it makes no sense, was everywhere. It was like yeah. Benny Johnson, like people are tweeting, it has huge like, retweets. And, and that's a real, like, it is a real problem just the, the way, the, um, the, the distribution that the, and the penetration that this stuff has. See, it's I, not just I, silliness. No, like, I think Eddie both of you made these crucial points. The, the concentration of power and the role that he can play is, is huge. I and mean, he's playing it in the most malign possible way. And we just spent 
an hour talking about Fox News, it almost feels as if, you know, that, that was the plague of the last decade. The plague yeah. of the next decade is going to be these billionaires uh, who, you know, who will traffic in the, in, the, in the most bizarre, sickest, most toxic alt-right stuff. It's sort of like Fox News on meth and arsenic. You know, so, um, for sure. And Fox News and, 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 mus and mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Know. I don't know. Mushrooms can kind of make you nice. Uh, meth. Um, but, I, I, you I, notice how the right went from, remember, like five minutes ago, the big enemy was we need to fight against big tech. Big yeah. tech is evil. Yeah. And suddenly it's like, oh no, yeah. I need Elon. Yeah, we're going to own it. No, but the other thing about Fox, and, and that was a really great conversation with Brian. I'm so happy he came. And, and Fox is still has. Is doing a lot of damage, no doubt. Yeah. But like the the influence of Fox is on the wane yeah. as compared to these right. these sources, right? And I, like started. the other right. And so you know you just look back at what we saw with with McCarthy getting overthrown uh, by Matt Gates. Like there were only two people that were for that at the start. It was like Matt Gates files a motion to vacate. Nobody was with him. Yeah. And then he goes across the street and he sits down with my buddy Steve Bannon and they go in the war room and they do an interview about it and Steve Bannon's pushing it. And now and Fox was against it. Fox and Friends was against it. Primetime Fox, remember? Like, they were all making fun of Gates. Right? Like, Gates was getting attacked by Laura Ingram yeah. all, across the board. And he won. He, well, Gates won. Right. Right, and, and, and Bannon won. And it's because of the distribution of this stuff. that Like, those guys, they, they've lost control a little bit over, over the, you know, their Frankenstein. I think we're going to be surprised at how much influence Musk is going to have on, like, the next-gen post-Donald Trump person. I mean. And yeah. I think... Uh, he's going to end up being a kingmaker in the way uh, people even like Trump or like Peter Thiel, uh, where both he can finance things as well as, I mean, Will Salatan said this. I said I was going to steal it from him, but I'm going to give him credit because I can't. Uh, but the, You're a person of integrity. Yeah. Uh, who, do you think, who do you think is going to, if, if Elon had been born in this country, I think there would be a lot of people talking about him for president, but instead it's going to be Tucker Carlson. Like, that is the post-Trump future. And there's a reason, like, what is Musk doing, right? He's building a relationship with Tucker, platforming him, and that's where we're headed next, sorry. Uplifting Thursday night for everybody. I'm just gonna everybody. JBL for one second. Yeah. Bar, is yeah. the bar still open? <laughs> So, so speaking of other media voices, I mean, it's good that uh, the Bulwark is able to come together to have this uh, friendly chat. I'm guessing that this is friendlier than if we had the staffers of the Daily Wire. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, the inside stuff. Yeah. You, are you all following the Ben versus Candace thing? Ben oh. Shapiro. Um, Treat yourself run? to it if you're not. It's yeah, like exactly. A, so it's just a feel good ben, story. Ben Shapiro, who was at one point like for five minutes, never Trump, he's yeah. gone all in, and thought it was a great idea to hire Candace Owens, um, who of course has been Candace, and this is this is nasty. I mean, this is this is ugly. Uh, well, one of the things that's, I mean, sometimes watching these fractures on the right can be really great because part of it is when Ben Shapiro uh, took a, basically described his Jewish faith and his mm -hmm. position on Jesus, that made Candace Owen very upset. Uh, and so I, she just like quoted scripture, which I guess yeah. it did seem weird that he took it like super personally that the scripture was aimed at him, yeah. but maybe it was. Here's my main take on it though. Uh, he, she must have an amazing contract because he's not firing her. He's yeah. just fighting with her on Twitter and he's like, you can quit. <laughs> and I'm like, you own this publication and if you think she's being like directly anti-Semitic to her boss, you could do something That about would it. be cancel culture. I'm uh, sorry. The <laughs> Daily Wire can't cancel somebody. It's either that. It's either that like, he can't get rid of her because they're too committed no, now to okay, that's, never that's true. impose consequences. Yeah. That, now, the Bible verse was something like, you cannot serve you know, God two and masters. money. Yeah, <laughs> two God masters, money. God and money. Subtle. And, and this, this yeah. was, of course, in the context of her taking you know, the most pro-Hamas. Pro but again, what was Ben Shapiro thinking when he hired her in the first place? Because you know her two favorite people, well, Candace is her favorite person. Basically, she's got this weird Jesus and Hitler, right? I mean, yeah. ideology. Oh. And it's like, wow, this woman's talking about Jesus and Hitler. It's a historic horseshoe. You know? yeah. This is embarrassing to the website that just hired her. 
but he won't find Yeah, it. the leopard's eating face is hiring party. Yeah, yeah, you know? no kidding. Um, very much. Uh, I, you know, I, it's, this is, can I just admit something? We're just all here together among oh. friends. Oh, okay. It's I, I, and in my head, you no. know, obviously Ben Don't is, say it. obviously Let's, Ben no, is stop. right. No, no, Like in stop. my heart, no, I'm like, go no. get her, go get him, Candace. <laughs> go get him, you got him, girl. Um, I was like, he made this bed and he's got a lie in it. <laughs> Um, I've been my, in my heart. It's been hard. She's been pulling at my heartstrings. I've been like, you know, I mean, the, the merits of what you're saying about what's happening are not a, are not accurate to say the least. But um, you know, they deserve this. He deserves it. Ben deserves it. Um, so I, I, here's the, here's the other thing. The, 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 I do think that there's something we can all get our get our laughs, and we should. We should just get a big old box of popcorn and share it. But there is an it, there's an interesting. Um, fissure happening, yeah. you know, um, it's, it's, on, it's, it's on, the, mer yeah, on yeah. the merits of, of what America's role in the world is. And this is another thing, America, you go all in on America first, which was Charles Lindbergh's yeah. uh, slogan. And uh, you know what, Charles Lindbergh's gonna come back for you eventually. And in, the sa and, and in a way, you know, obviously there's some of this happening on the left and we can talk about that, but what you're seeing with the younger conservatives, I know you just had a focus group, Candace, again, wrong on the merits. Yeah right in my heart. Also, Ooh. I think right with the TPUSA kids. Yeah. I, 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 I think that in the okay. end, they are not, I think that, that the younger conservatives, I think that's another reason he can't fire her because they are, they don't want America spend, you know, sending their money over. Anyway, you were talking to that group, you, so yeah. why don't you? Uh, well, I do, so I did a group of young progressives and a group of young conservatives, and both were extremely depressing. Uh, oh. <laughs> The future Damn was kids. Not right. The kids were there, not all right. There man. seems to be a pattern <laughs> yeah. in the focus groups. Uh, yeah. Well, the thoughts are real people. It's fun. Uh, I would say the main thing with the young with the young conservatives that was really interesting is they only liked three people currently running for president, and those were Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis, and Vivek Ramaswamy. And oh, yeah. the best three. Oh. Yeah, the best three. And here's the thing. Well, you have to. So these guys are all now Wonderful. in their early twenties. Wow. They have grown up in the Trump era. It's all they've known. The idea of like the Nikki Haley, like Nikki Haley and Chris Christie are talking about, like doesn't even make sense to them. That's not a Republican Party that so they that they've yeah. seen. But on the foreign policy thing, though, that, if that's the if that's the main fissure where, where Ben is really still an old school like neo, I mean, he might try to you know cut cut cull around the edges of we shouldn't be funding Ukraine or whatever to keep his audience happy. But like like Ben is still not is pretty aggressive on foreign policy. And Candace is like no America first and literally. These guys are no. Like yeah, they they're are on the Candace side. Yeah. These young guys. Complete. And, yeah, and this is but this is becoming just more and more uh, the left the prog young progressives yeah. are too right. This idea where everybody thinks this world this idea that we're about to enter war, World War Three that we might send troops to either Israel or Ukraine is just the kind of thing people have really, really? internalized. No matter how many pe times people say, that's not what's happening here, uh, everybody sort of feels like that's where we're going. Okay, so I think that the, the, the what we're seeing now, the, this Israel-Hamas split, <coughs> this is, the, the, the fissure is so deep on both the right and the left, we've been, been talking about it here, but does it go away? Or is it, I mean, because I think it's enduring, and, and there's a lot of people look, looking at one another going, I'm not on your team anymore. You know, I thought we were allies, but you know, we're kind of done. And this is going to be one of those generational things yeah. that I think we're gonna be living with for a very long uh, time. So just talk to me about like, what is the long tail of this, this split? Because I mean, it's not like not all progressives you know, have gone you know, sure. isolationist and many of them are, are, are pro-Israel. Obviously, most you know, Republican elected officials are very, very pro-Israel, but so where, where are we going? So I think there's a, diff there's a couple different ways to look at it, but one of them is like through the political lens. So one of the things I was trying to figure out in the group of young progressives was, okay, but how are you gonna vote? Mm -hmm. Like right. you think, because one of the young progressives was like, you know, my grandmother said some really pro problematic things. <laughs> And she and Bill Biden are the same age, and I bet he says a lot of really problematic things. But with the re problematic is a very diplomatic word. Yeah, Sunny Bunch would give her five problematic. But the thing was, they also have a bunch of stuff they're really concerned about in this moment, right? Uh, they 
are really concerned about LGBT issues. They're super concerned about abortion. Mm -hmm. And so when it came to Trump versus Biden, they were all like, oh, no, I'm going to vote for Biden. Okay. And so the, I think... I, so so not, not Cornell West, not no. Bill Stein. Uh, and, and it's some of them were talking about how they had friends who said they were going to go third party and they were jumping on yeah, them right. and be like, we can't do this. And so I think that the political coalition in the short term might hang together longer than the coalition over the longer term, because they are going to yeah. have a reckoning, I think, somewhat similar to us. And the other thing that's happening right now is that they, the Democratic Party really relies yeah. on young people in a way the Republican Party often relies on old people uh, to be their like boots on the ground apparatus, right. door knocking, those things. That's where the Dems, I think, might really struggle, because right now, the people who are the activist class of the Democrats who go knock on doors, they're the ones who are mad, who feel like Biden's not doing enough uh, to protect. I, I want to. I just yeah. want to. Um, I, I agree with all of that, and I want to kind of maybe. I think maybe with the with the larger group, we might get into the um, to the policy of, of what's happening in Israel a little more. Um, get excited for that. Um, but uh, I want to defend the kids for one second on one element of the of the merits. So um, I went to speak some GW kids last night, and one of them told me that uh, I inspired them to get into politics when they were in sixth grade, and I like <laughs> wanted to fall into the grave. <laughs> When they said that, like, uh, but anyway, Tim, it gets worse. I know, I know. <laughs> but anyway, I was, you know, so they're like, I asked one of them, I was like, so wait, so what? How old are you? Like, when were you? You know, and they're like, I was born in 2004 or whatever. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, if you're born in 2004, right, or if you're born in 99, or if you're born in 97, right, even, and you don't really remember 9/11, right, like your whole life, all we've had is one foreign policy fuck up after another. Like, sorry, like Iraq was a disaster, Afghanistan was a disaster, and you know, Libya was a disaster, Syria, and we tried everything, by the way. We tried, we tried, we'll be hands on, we'll try to, we'll, uh, you know, we'll try to have regime change. Uh, have we'll, try, we'll try to no, do, we yeah, we'll try to have a red line, we'll do nothing, like we'll try to intervene, and like nothing has worked, and so, I don't know, if you were an 18 year old, I, the, to use another 18 year old buzzword like problematic, uh, lived experience, like your lived experience is maybe right. we and should just do nothing. And you can see this in the polling, the difference between older Democrats yeah. and younger Democrats. I mean, it's right. pretty stark. And so it's like older Democrats lived through a lot of good stuff, right? Like they, yeah. thank you for your service, sir. They remember World War II where we beat the fascists, right? They remember when we beat the commies. Right, so you know, I think that that makes sense, and, and and so I think that that speaks to the fact that this is going to be a long-term um, fissure, and I think that a lot of their even even maybe the way it manifests itself, talking about how Osama bin Laden is making sense and glory to our martyrs, mm -hmm. that's not good. But like the the rationale like is kind of sensible and it's understandable that I, I think this is going to be something we're going to have to to deal with and communicate and and be in dialogue with people who you know, are gonna be staffing these next administrations who don't have the same experience. Okay, I wanna move on. You must wanna, you wanna comment on that? But, I mean, I have like a halfway comment about how like mm. maybe we should do a better job of explaining why America can be a force for good in the world and like what American I agree. leadership yeah. in the world. Because I keep watching Mitch McConnell make like, like, no, we should do this because we're the ones building yeah. the bombs. And I'm like, that is not gonna, yeah. that's not exactly the most persuasive reason yeah. for like why America should still have a role to play in the yeah. world. But. Maybe, just maybe we ought to teach history in schools. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Radical idea. Okay, so main event, main topic. Of the all right. Is there gonna be a fight? No, 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 not a, actually fight not fight? at all. I mean, so. Um, I would I, fight with Tim. I think we, I don't think there's gonna be a fight here. Uh, I, I, I think we all agree okay. that democracy is on the ballot. This is a huge existential threat to d democracy. Now. Depends how you define democracy. Democracy means, hey, the more the merrier, get people involved in politics, right? Um, run for office, vote for office, all of those things. So why, Sarah Longwell, would a third party not be a good idea in 2024? <laughs> Should it be the more the merrier? It's gonna merrier? stand up and give a TED talk about <laughs> this. Uh, I didn't actually, think I was. <laughs> yeah. uh, just really quickly, actually, I, this, I can do this one easily. So we've yeah. been, uh, I just had a piece in the bulwark about this, but we've been talking to voters uh, in both parties, and here's the thing, Republicans are gonna vote for Trump, Trump voters are gonna vote for Trump, Democrats are gonna vote for Joe Biden. The only people that are gonna vote for the Joe Manchin, Larry Hogan ticket, which appeals to my centrist heart, uh, we don't have to like debate that right now, but like the only people who are gonna vote for that ticket are the six to seven percent of voters that you need 
in not the pro-Joe Biden coalition, but in the anti-Trump coalition, right? There is an anti-Trump coalition that brings together center, like right-leaning independents, soft GOP voters, it's the people Republican voters against Trump appeals to. Those are the only people who, when you test it in focus groups, you know, not that we say, but you know, gun to your head, Biden or Trump, uh, and people feel like there's a gun to their head with the choices. Um, but, yeah. Okay. <laughs> the swing voters- That's the democracy gods yeah. 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 <laughs> lecturing you. The swing voters mostly take Biden. Uh, you'll be like, you know, eight to one. Mm -hmm. You throw in a third party, and it'll be like two Biden. Uh, and like, can, you could, that's, that's how- Can that, I offer, yeah. can I do a visual aid? Yes. Do you mind if I do a visual yeah, aid? Absolutely. Okay, I'm taking your water to do a visual aid, okay? We'll, All right, we'll I'm going to stand up. Okay, so. Dancing? If, yeah, no, I'm not going to dance. Okay. Uh, like Joe Biden's little dance that he did the <laughs> other night. I was like, uh, Joe, yeah. I don't know yeah. about that. Yeah. All right, okay. so I do think that there might in the future be room for a third party. Like, right, right, let's say we had a presidential race where you have like MAGA Mike Johnson over here, like a far right evangelical, yeah. and like you have like, I don't know, Elon mm. Omar or something over mm. here, and they're yeah. the two nominees. Yeah. A lot of space, yeah. a lot of space here in the middle for Charlie and mm. Sarah to run on a unity ticket, right? Yeah. Okay, but here's the current race that we have. We have Joe Biden right here <laughs> on the center left, and then we have Donald Trump. Trying to ruin democracy. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there's no room for a middle ground there. I, I am most impressed that you hit it. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. But, but this is, to go back to this, I can understand the appeal of this, right? Yeah, of course. Can I have a bottle of water? Did you? Yeah. I, I, your you water's water, gone. You're water, making me thirsty. Water, water. Yeah, your water's gone. <laughs> okay. Somebody can bring us a couple of waters. Man, I, that was... <laughs> thank cool. thank, thank you. Cool. Roll it on up. But you can understand the attraction of this, right? right? I mean, you. Yep, no. Oh man, this is so good. <laughs> oh, okay, you can understand the attraction of all of this because people okay. definitely do not want to have it Trump versus Biden, right? I mean, That's there's true. The, and the double haters. Yeah. There are there are you know tens of millions of double haters, yeah. and the double haters would love to have another choice. And, and I remember like right after the 2016 election, everywhere I went, people were saying, is this the moment for a third party? Should we have a third party? And so you know that, that the, the folks from No Labels, you know, are, oh. tap, are, 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 are tapping into this, yeah. okay? So what do you say to the people who are the double haters who do think, okay, we need to change things. I don't want two 80 year olds. I don't want the duopoly. Give me somebody that is reasonable and moderate and can bring the country together. Yeah. What do you say to that person? Uh, you say to that person, so here's the thing that's, that's not in the American psyche right now, but is going to be. Right now, people, because Joe Biden is the president, they know what they don't like about Joe Biden and they're, very, they're frustrated with the economy. And remember, these swing voters tend to be sort of center right. They, have, they don't see what Trump bleats on Truth Social. Like, Trump is not in their field of vision yeah. right now. They've just forgotten why they hate him. They're gonna remember. Like, he's gonna come on the scene in a, in a way that people are gonna, it's, it's amazing how little coverage he's getting. And I think that, I don't know, the media's a little damned if you do, damned if you don't on this, because they still get a lot of criticism. Like, why do you cover everything he does? Don't do that. But now everybody's like, why aren't you covering the insane thing that he's saying? Uh, and like, what are they supposed to do? Like, either you give him oxygen or you don't, and he's not getting that oxygen right now, and as a result, he's basically- Can I be a little meaner? Can I give, say something uh, to the double haters? Like, be a fucking grown up, okay? Sometimes, I'm sorry, sometimes in life, you have two bad choices. Like, we all have, we all sometimes in life face situations where like, I have two, I have two bad choices in front of me. Like, I either need to work an extra shift, you know, to, or pay, you know, and then spend less time with my kids, or spend more time with my kids and not have enough money to to pay for it. Like, like sometimes in life you have two bad choices, and I don't even think we. It's not my opinion that we have two bad choices this time, but in these people's opinion, it is. I'm like, I'm sorry. That's just that's it. We, we're, there's not gonna. I'm sorry, Will Salatin. There's not gonna be a pony. There's not gonna be a third choice. It's a pony. We're not gonna make things easy on you. It's it's a find, fucking election. There are two pony. choices. One guy wants to end the country. The other guy's old. Sorry. But this is. Yeah. Okay, wait. Okay, so I, I have a question. Please. Okay, so crowd here got a dopamine hit, but I am not a high-powered political consultant, so you, you correct me. 
I'm not sure that. Neither are we. So. Be, yeah. <laughs> I finished that, in last place not, in 2016 for a reason. I am, I am not sure that be a fucking grown up is the most persuasive argument you could no, make. No, no, no. I'm not I'm trying not. to persuade them. I'm just saying, like, that's what, okay. that's the reality. I don't you're know. What am I supposed you, to tell them? You're going to tell them they're going to re elect Donald Trump. Sorry. Okay. My wind yeah. up was really yeah. about how they are going to remember that they hate Donald Trump, and you're going to say, if you vote for a third party, you're going to re-elect him. Right. And people are going to get that over the next year. Can you understand? I, I, some people, I think, have a hard time with my formulation that 2024 is the, the prime directive is not re-electing Joe Biden. It is stopping yes. Donald stopping Trump. Stopping Donald Trump. And that Donald Trump yeah. is the existential. Yes. And so we could devote our times to telling the, the double haters, no, you should love this guy or you should do you no. Know, but I'm just saying. You need to understand who Donald Trump is and what Donald Trump um, I agree with that. represents. Yep. Okay, um, real quick question about, about third, fourth, fourth parties. Uh, Peter Hamby, your buddy from uh, Vanity Fair, had a very interesting yeah. piece the other day. Um, I think he wrote it in Puck, um, saying that Democrats are underestimating the danger of RFK. They're focusing on the no labels people. Yep. Uh, and I want to ask you another question about no labels. Um, remind me. Um, but so who does, yeah. RF, who does RFK Jr. hurt more, Trump or Biden? I think Biden? probably he probably hurts Trump more, but Peter is smart, and it was I'm yeah. glad, and he'll be he'll be happy you brought this yeah. up. So hi Peter, he'll he'll listen to this yeah. podcast okay. for once. Um, uh, Peter's point, which was if you look at the data, and this might I, I think the reason why RFK probably hurts Trump in the end is the is that the people I'm about to talk about probably end up going for Biden, mm -hmm. but 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 right now RFK is doing really well with non-college voters of color. Like, which is a weak area yeah. for Biden, right? And they look at RFK, and you know, some of them are low info voters, and just as a Kennedy name, and they're unhappy with Biden. Some of them are higher info voters, and you know, we saw this in the in the black community in particular. There was a group that was liberal, but was not did not do vaccine uptake. You know, mm -hmm. I think that there's a long like lack of trust in the government that's totally legitimate in that community, for example. Um, and so I think that RFK's numbers, like Peter was pointing out, the Michigan tabs. And, and Biden was at like 55 with black voters in Michigan with, yeah, in a three-way with RFK. That is RFK. a genuinely scary number. That is a genuine, yeah. maybe it was 65, yeah. right? I don't, I don't remember right off. But it was a concerningly yeah. low number. And so Peter's point yeah. is that Democrats should not be, you know, should not be just saying, uh, kind of, I'm kind of rooting for RFK because yeah. maybe he'll come in and do to Trump what we are worried Cornell West is going to do to us or Jill Stein or whatever. I, I, I'm not so sure because I do think because of exactly what Sarah was just saying, in the end when it's like really it's going to be Donald Trump, I, you would think most of those folks would come around. But I think it's a worthy thing to be okay. to keep an eye on. What do you think? Can I, well, yeah, yeah. So just this is like the, the nerd answer, but it's just it's a question of ballot access. So the reason that no labels is the one that everybody thinks about is yeah. because they've got $70 million and they're currently pursuing ballot access actively yeah. in all 50 states and they are achieving it in most states and they are litigating it actively in the yeah. places that they're not. I think there's a question about whether or not he can get on the ballot. I think there's a question about whether, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. And so it, I think the reason that people yeah. are less scared of him is just, it is remains okay. to be seen. So yeah. what is another label gonna do? Who are they gonna nominate, you think? Huntsman, Mansion? God, they said, I, what? My life, you're, you're, just can't be John Hunt, Huntsman. I just, no, I, I think it's gonna be Hogan. I way mean, back with Hogan Huntsman. Really want, I think Hogan seems like he really wants it. Uh, really? And we should all send him nice notes that, talk about what a wonderful governor he yeah. was and why he is great and why he should absolutely not do this. Here's the problem. What is it like when a bunch of billionaires come up to you all the time and they're like, run for president. You would be amazing. This is what we need yeah. right now. So who is, who is no labels? Why are they doing this? I mean, who, I mean I'm talking about the, the nitty gritty. What is it? Uh, so Nancy Jacobson. Gr Griff scam. Is it gonna be uh, and scam? she's married to Mark Penn, okay. who you might remember Falser. from wearing like sweaters when yeah. he was worked for Hillary Clinton. Yeah. But they became sort of Trump, Trumpy in there. Do you remember Trump was like a no labels guy? That was like their model for no labels. This outside candidate. What? There's a what? back in 2015. Yeah, like yeah. So like, they, they before, say that yeah. they will absolutely not be spoilers. They will if they think they're going to be a spoiler, they won't do it. But here's but they but they run. Here's the thing. This is what they do right now. And this is yeah. The 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 sixty four thousand dollar question is going to be this. What they do is they pull and they just say like, do you want a third party? Yeah. They put no name to it. Yeah. The second, and so it's like, look, 60% of people want another choice. Therefore, obviously, people want this. The second they put Joe Manchin and Larry Hogan, a bunch of Democrats are going to be like, screw Joe Manchin, and a bunch of other people are going to be like, I've never heard of that other guy. So, like, <laughs> then they're going to get 12%. You think 12%? That's a high number. And it's going to go down as people oh, oh, learn I see. more. Okay. 
Okay. Um, I was going to ask you a question about Joe Biden, but I think I'm going to leave that for the super panel. Okay. Uh, which no, come Tim, on. What, what, no, 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 no. no. I, let, I'm moderating gonna, the super panel, though, so if you want my opinion, right. this is the moment. <laughs> no, no, no. It would, be a, it would be too long a conversation, and I'm interested to see how, how, how you handle that. Now, our super panel, by the way, um, thank you all for listening to this edition <laughs> of the, 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 the next level. What a cliffhanger. Yeah. And coming up, as I, as I indicated before, we're going to bring on the rest of the Bulwark team. Bill Crystal, A.B. Stoddard, Mona Charon, Will Salatan. So just give us a few minutes to change things up here. Uh, Hang out for a second. You know? I don't think we should just talk. No? I mean, we should probably talk. You ready to get going? So guys, I gave a TED Talk yesterday. Yeah, that's cool. I hope, yeah. I had to practice this thing for like, 12 days straight, you have to memorize it, and they won't let you use notes. And I got up, and in my second paragraph, I just forgot what I was saying. <laughs> and I just stared into the lights <laughs> and waited for what seems like 12 hours, and then I had to start over the second paragraph. You'll never see that on the video. Everybody, and then, and then I was fine, but for everybody who came up to me afterwards was like, that is gonna be great when they edit it. It's gonna be really <laughs> awesome when they edit it. Didn't even notice that one thing. Yeah. That booger on your nose the whole time. It was awesome besides the booger. All right, we can get going. Hello, everybody. So we have Mona Charon of the Beg to Differ podcast. <laughs> who are you again? Uh, we have A.B. Stoddard, who we welcomed to the Bulwark recently. The only person Your first live show. more scared about democracy than me. We have 2002 to 2012 Fox News <laughs> <laughs> panelist Bill Crystal. Hey. We've got the great Will Salatin over here with me. Okay, we're gonna start with something light. I'm taking. I'm in charge of this panel. In case you were wondering, Charlie did not want to be in charge. Charlie has a lot of opinions he wants to get off his chest. So we're gonna switch. <laughs> we're switching spots. Um, uh, we're going to start with something kind of light here so everybody can laugh. Um, there's a war in Gaza. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, and uh, I just I want to admit something. I want to admit something to everybody. It's not the Osama bin Laden thing. Uh, I, I'm like, I'm, I, I had Will sit next to me for a reason. And Sarah, I put you in the middle for a reason because you don't like to talk about the merits of foreign policy. So you're going to be you're going to be moderating the exchange. Over on the very end. Yeah. I I am with Will. I'm starting to get queasy. I'm starting to get queasy about what's happening in Gaza. I'm getting squishy. My little bleeding heart is starting to bleed. It's okay. And thank you. And I've been reading things. And I've been listening to people. And I'm like, and, and I've been listening to all the smart folks over there. And Mona's son, Bill Ben Parker, who's out there, is very smart. And all the things that they tell me to listen to. And um, I don't think anybody has a good plan for what's yeah. happening in Gaza. And I don't know that we um, should be completely unapologetically supporting BB no matter what. And I'm starting to wonder, so it's not, a, um, I'm just starting to wonder if, if like, you know, if it, I'm hoping that some of you have a plan. That's all I'm saying. Do we have a plan for solving this? Because otherwise, I just don't know about, about all the bombs. And so I brought Will onto my side because I know he's squishy and bleeding heart. And so I want us to, I want Will to, you know, kind of make me feel better about, the, about my position. And then I want you guys to tell me how wrong I've been, okay? And then we're going to get to have fun. So Will, Gaza, go. So uh, JBL couldn't be here tonight, so I'm going to channel JBL. Because I'm, I'm sorry about the pessimism just, here. And, just really quick, I'm sorry. <laughs> we haven't said, uh, uh, JBL's uh, father-in-law died this week. And so uh, I know it's terrible. So if everybody, he will listen to this. So if everybody could just give JBL and Shannon a big piece of love and a round of applause right now. We really appreciate it. <laughs> he is very sorry to miss you all. Continue. So uh, we were talking earlier about anti-Semitism. Uh, anybody seen the movie Nobody's Fool? Yep. Right, Paul Newman movie. There's a scene in the movie where he's talking to a friend of his. He finds out he's Jewish. And when he finds out he's Jewish, he says, how come you ain't smart? <laughs> so this is the way I feel about Benjamin Netanyahu and the Israeli <laughs> government. <laughs> so what the strangest thing to me is it, Israel was completely overrun, completely shocked on October 7th by this Hamas attack. They 
I had no idea what was going on. We had this myth of, you know, it, Israel knows what they're doing, they had the most amazing intelligence, they had the most amazing defense force, completely blindsided, okay. Horrific, terrible. Why should we believe that Israel's operation in Gaza, its offensive operation, is any better planned than its defense was? Right? Ooh. Now, I mean, I'm, I fully, uh, Hamas is a terrorist organization. I, I absolutely believe in its destruction. You're not gonna make peace with these guys. They don't want peace, they want war. And the kids at GW with the glory to the Hamas should just really <coughs> be expelled probably, <laughs> from school. <laughs> so, but I am very concerned that they do not have a plan. That they, have a, they, have, they do have a plan for going into, uh, try to find Hamas guys under the hospitals and that sort of, all the logistical stuff there. But the day after, what happens after this, Benjamin Netanyahu, does liter his government literally does not have the same position from day to day over right. what their plan is for Gaza going forward. So I'm, I don't have a pony for you here. I don't think they have a plan and they're gonna need help. They're gonna need help from the United States. They're gonna need help possibly from other governments. Guys, Mona, do you have a plan for us? Okay. Do, you have a, do you have a reason that we shouldn't feel a little nervous about what's happening? Okay, first of all, um, it is not about supporting or not supporting Bibi Netanyahu, okay? 76% of Israelis do not, you know, would, would not like to see Netanyahu in power anymore. Uh, the only reason he's still there is that they need to get through this emergency before, as in a democratic society, they can do, and they will get rid of him. Um, so it isn't about him, um, but look, it, the situation was stage managed by Hamas to create the moment we're in, right? They committed these atrocities against Israelis because they wanted Israel to come and murder Palestinians. Because when, when Hamas kills Israelis, they win. And when Israelis kill Palestinians, Hamas wins. So that is their plan and the, the notion that Israel doesn't have a plan is, it's really not the point. The fact is, if Israel does not crush Hamas after what it did to Israel, they cannot have a country. You cannot live next to a terrorist organization, an Islamist terrorist organization that doesn't want its own state, they want to eliminate Israel and they want to kill every Jew in the <coughs> world if they can. So Israel's only goal here, the plan, is to destroy Hamas. That's the plan. And that's enough of a plan. Look, if they, they could have a great plan and they shouldn't tell you and they shouldn't tell me and they wouldn't tell us. So I think the whole plan thing is a little bit of a... Uh, red herring. I mean, everyone in America wants to feel better if we knew what the plan was. If they're committing, if they're being indiscriminate and they're killing of civilians and we have real firm evidence of that, we should say so. I totally agree with that. But here's the one thing I think we can take comfort in. I very much agree. This is not Bibi Netanyahu's war. He totally messed up, obviously, on October 7th. He's been messing up for quite a while before that. I think, I hope, I wish he weren't still running the government. I wish Gans were just in charge, but uh, they've decided they have to get through this war, first part of this war at least. But this is a country where many of the people fighting in Gaza said they came to anti-Netanyahu demonstrations for months. They don't support Netanyahu. If, if, if this were indiscriminate, if there were war crimes being committed, if, they, if those people felt this was going like Lebanon, let's say in 82, we would start to hear about it. The Israeli society is not a deferential society. The Israeli military is not deferential. In 82, when they were in Lebanon, uh, or in 2006, after about 30 days, there was plenty of dissent in Israel. Now you can say this time there wouldn't be because of the grotesqueness of the atrocities that Hamas committed and maybe there'd be more reluctance. But I, I trust Israeli society and really the Israeli liberals in a sense, many of whom were in the military, many of whom were very senior <laughs> levels in the military, to let us know if things are going awry. And I will get very alarmed if you have major dissent in Israel that Bibi's just doing this for his political survival, sure. that he just wants to you know, ethnically cleanse Gaza or something. But for now, I don't hear much of that, and any of that. And I have the sense that let's, let's give them some time, and uh, this is a military that's typically been pretty as studious as much as they can in this kind of circumstance about not having too many civilian casualties. So let's see what the plan, we don't know what the plan is. Let's give them some time until, until the Israeli 
society alerts us that there's a real problem. That's fair on the long-term plan, and I totally agree with Mona about the need to eventually, at some point, eradicate Hamas or they can't live together. My question, though, is I, I, there are all these hostages that still exist, right? And there is this, I think, kind of unspoken statement in our world, like unspoken belief that, like, in order to get the hostages out, the best thing to do is to go in there and kick their ass, right? Not to be, like, not to be too um, crass about it. But, like, is that right? Are we well, sure they're going right? to come out. It looks like, uh, like most of them are going to come out in the next few days. Uh, there seems to be a deal pretty much worked on. I give Biden credit for doing a lot behind the scenes that he doesn't talk about. And I think, to be fair, the Israeli government and probably the Saudi government and others are doing a fair amount. But look, I agree. I mean, it's fair to judge by results. I just think now it's way too early to know what they're doing in Gaza, what the number of, of terrorist casualties is as opposed to civilian casualties, whether there is a plan that's sort of reasonable to go in and then get out and leave it in a decent situation or a possible UN trusteeship or something that would be better than the status quo ante. I don't know. I do think what? they have, I mean, they, I think they are going to get a fair number, I hope they get the fair number of the hostages out in the next few days. Why are there not demonstrations all over the planet saying Hamas release the hostages? <laughs> Yeah, one more. Go ahead. Will, take it. Can, I, can I defend the double standard, though? Uh, sorry. <laughs> All right. I, I'm going to defend the double standard. The double standard is applied to you when you are the good guys. Nope. Nope. That's what it means. The nope. reason why nobody's holding protest expecting Hamas to release the hostages is because everyone knows Hamas is evil. No. Okay? That is not That is true. 99%. That Israel is expected to behave according to the laws of war because Israel is still being held to the standards of being a good nation. No. It, I, I wish that were true, Will. I really do. But when, if that is the rule, right, then what it does is it empowers the very worst people. It says, well, we don't have any standards for Hamas. After all, they're barbarians. So when they go and you know, burn families alive and chop off the breasts of mothers in front of their children before they kill them, well, who expected anything else? But Israel, on the other hand, we're gonna hold to a higher standard. We're gonna say, Israel, cease fire immediately. Do not fight back because you are more noble. And you know what that's a recipe for? The end of Israel. All right. Does anybody else have a final word? Otherwise, Sarah, you've been put in the middle to decide who wins, Will or Mona. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Will, this is what you that. get for joining the neocons. I, I just, Tough titties, Will, that was a loss for you. I, I just want to say one thing. Uh, to, to anyone who actually believes in a, the Jewish conspiracy, uh, conspiracy to run the world, what you're seeing here is the evidence of why this would never happen. <laughs> <laughs> Jews cannot agree on anything. Um, okay. Great. I've, now we're moving to the rapid fire segment. This is going to be fun. We're starting with my favorite game, jail or president. Okay. <laughs> Everybody gets to upload this. All right. Here we go. Today is November 16th, 2023. On November 2025, I want you to give me the odds that, president, that Donald Trump is the president, the odds that he's in jail, or the odds that he's neither. House arrest in Mar-a-Lago counts as jail. <laughs> I will start. I think that there is a 48% chance that he's the president. I think that there is a 12% chance he's in jail. A 40% chance that it's neither. So I go president, neither, jail. 12% jail, not bad, something what, to hope what's, for. What's the, what's the date? November 16th, 2025, okay, two years one, from today. 100% chance that uh, Joe Biden will still be the president. 100%. Oh my God! Wow. JBL isn't here, so Charlie is giving us the, uh, the positive look at things. Right. Really, 100% chance. Will, give your oh, don't don't get dark on me here. 100%. Oh, well, um, we don't ju generally change presidents until January, so. Uh, uh, no, November 2025. Oh, I'm 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 sorry. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> Okay, Charlie. Charlie's on the Charlie's on the record. No seconds. No seconds in this. Put up the video. I'm gonna withdraw this. Charlie was at that Aspen dispensary before this. Getting his years wrong. Okay, you think about it. Will, we'll go for you then. We'll start moving this way. Okay. Well, you made it easy. So as far as president, I I don't know. Look, 
first of all, I'm going to give you some punditry here. I am a very, very reliable pundit. I am very reliable because I am reliably wrong. I, I thought Tim Scott was going to be the Republican oh. nominee for president. Okay. Idiot. So, so. Idiot. So. Whoa. Whoa. Man. Come on. That's no pundit Tim Scott. Come on, man. This is for for okay. It was like it was like it was for 48 hours, but I did believe okay. it for a minute. Um, we all have our mistakes. So I don't know. Uh, Trump, I'm going to say 40% chance of being president. Um, I'm not going to go higher than that. Um, but jail, I'm going to say easily less than 5%. And the reason why is because you said jail. You didn't say conviction. Jail or house arrest? Um, ne uh, ne I think he, if he gets Home convicted, detention. he'll get former president <laughs> privilege. So uh, I, don't, I don't think he's going to jail. Uh, but I'm, uh, I am much more alarmed about him being president your, than I was six months Scott's ago. Your Tim Scott's prediction was almost as bad as if you Google me, you can find this one. Hillary will beat Trump from jail. It's <laughs> <laughs> a nice you headline of mine. Was, it was so, you were so <laughs> confident in that one. Yeah, oh boy. Okay, Sarah, jail or president? Oh, I don't need your mic. Uh, <laughs> sorry. 5% uh, jail, the math's hard. 45% neither. 50% president. Bill Crystal. Yeah. Like, what was that show that used to be? What was that show we used to be on where you could go like one b below the other person and win? Was it, <laughs> was it the Price is Right or something like that? Yeah. 49% president. Oh, now I've got Sarah pinned here, you know. Yeah, I'm with Tim, sort of 48% president. Yeah. That's okay. A B. Five percent on the jail. I mean, I, yeah. and I was so strange to see Michael Cohen on TV the other day saying that he's very concerned that about Trump going to jail. He doesn't believe it would be safe for the country because he will be selling our nation's secrets in jail, and so that's why he <laughs> should be on house arrest. Um, but I think it's around five percent, and I'm I'm sorry. I've got to go with Sarah on the fifty percent chance. Okay, Mona. Any help from Mona? 30% chance president. All right. Because we're all going to make sure of it. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to make sure of it. All right, if I, if I get to do a do over. Do okay. over. 33% chance uh, jail or house arrest. All right, Charlie. I believe, I believe in the rule of law. Um, Charlie does the podcast with Ben Wittes, who's in the house today. Which, which you know, obviously. So he's our legal expert. Which, which obviously leaves 35% chance of president. Okay. And just do the math. Yeah, 133. Okay, this will be the final math question. We're going to go back around one more time. The percent chance that Nikki Haley wins the Republican nomination. <laughs> Charlie. I'm, I'm waiting for Will to predict who's going to do it. <laughs> Mona. <laughs> no, zero. Zero. Mona. Uh, four and a half. Four and a half. A, B. <laughs> Zero. I disagreed with Bill on email yesterday, and I was like, I've never disagreed with JVL. Or I disagree with JVL on whether Biden should run. That's the only thing that I disagree with him on. And Bill and I have not disagreed until yesterday, and I was like, I'm so disappointed in Bill for being wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because, he ac because he actually said that Chris Christie should drop out and endorse oh. Nikki Haley. Because she has a shot at becoming the nominee. What, how much of a yeah. shot? 10%? Yeah, 10%. 10%? No way. Bill Crystal, we're in business. Nikki Haley. 10%. All right, here's the, the, the question. Let's ask it a different way. Uh, and also, he should drop out. He should not endorse Haley. Her, it, it will not, not help her if he endorses yeah, her, but his votes will go will to her. Will naturally go anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Interesting. What do you think the percentage chance is that Trump expires of natural causes in a way that I'm not advocating for. The fatal Big Mac. Because <laughs> in a way that Trump I'm not dies. Whatever percentage or or unnatural causes. I mean, you know, <laughs> let's not be let's not be squeamish. Not, not let's not be not squeamish here. Well, Why well, stop enough. at the Big I Mac? I'm well. for natural cause death, not unnatural cause death. Just I saw record. I saw Richard the Third right here on this stage. <laughs> <laughs> a fantastic performance at the Shakespeare Theater. So I'm just saying I'm just saying the, 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 the play here is that Nikki works her way into second place, solid, and then something happens to Trump. That is the way. One percent chance. Whatever, Meteor. Six percent. Six. Six. Yeah. All right. Well. Okay. So if I understand the game show right, I heard a six and I heard a ten. Yeah. So if I take six and a half, I get everything yeah. between yeah. them. I'll take that. Six and a half. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna take one to be ahead of Charlie. Mm -hmm. I will say I, I thought today when I saw the Nikki Haley poll and I heard and I was seeing Bill and others are behind Chris Christie should drop out. I, I, again, not rooting for this. I'm rooting for him to die. 
Uh, uh, but I think the funniest thing objectively would be for Nikki, for Chris Christie to drop out, for Nikki to win New Hampshire, for people like Bill Crystal to be like, it's all going to happen. Nikki Haley, it's all going to happen. And they go to Straight South Carolina here. and he crushes her by 30 points. And it's like, oh, right, it's still the Republican Party. Blah, blah. And there's a decent chance that might happen now. So that is still not actually... It, it's, the it's, not the re, it's not the Republican Party anymore. It's the Trump Party. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Thank you, Mona. Okay, we're going to play a game now called You're the Worst. Everybody gets to pick somebody and give three sentences oh, on why no. they are the worst. Oh, I wish I'd known about this before. Okay, that. sorry. No, we're doing this live, live on stage. It's not on stage. A.B., A.B.? I think I'm going to go with Clay Higgins this week. Clay Higgins. What? The ghost buses, and he the said to buses. he said to FBI Director Ray, your time is coming. What? Yeah, yeah, here's the guy with the ghost buses. In a congressional hearing. Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you're the worst. You name who you think is the worst. The worst person in the world, you know. Is it this week or like? Yeah, no, in life. Oh, yeah, just the personal, me. something you want to get off your chest. Somebody you hate. You're the worst. You want me to go? Just kind of show you how yeah, it's done? Yeah, yeah. You're the worst. <laughs> Peter Meyer. Oh. Go to hell, Peter Meyer. Oh. Go to hell, Peter Meyer. I'm sorry. I have just like... Will thinks that the protesters have higher expectations for Israel, which I'm kind of on Mona's side of that one, even though I'm on your side of the debate. Um, I have higher expectations for the people who know better and who voted to impeach Trump and who are supposed to be the responsible ones. And Peter Meyer is going to run for Senate and act like the Afghanistan withdrawal, not great, is worse than ending our democracy. No, fuck you, Peter Meyer. Uh, I'm sorry. You're the worst. Okay, I've got one. Okay. okay. I actually thought that the question was how we had to explain that, that we were the worst, <laughs> which I think would be more interesting. This is confessional. Be, because I would have said, I am the worst person here because I'm responsible for Ron Johnson being the United States Senator. Uh, right I would have won. I would have won the game. But I don't know. He's got Sarah Palin. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I've got Ken Cuccinelli. I've got Ken Cuccinelli. I work for Rick Santorum. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Will would have won this day. I'm feeling great because I got none of these people. None of them. Uh, Charlie, I should have gamed this out with you okay. before. That would have been very Catholic. Hey. Jim Swift hey. appreciates that. Just kind of uh, <laughs> repenting yeah, on stage. Yeah, we should, we should do that. Okay, uh, the, the, the obvious answer is Elon Musk. Fuck him. Elon Musk. You're the worst. No, no. You're the worst. Um, this is easy. I'm surprised you guys didn't think of it. The worst person is Stephen Miller, that human homunculus. Succubus. Yes. He is the worst. Bill? Hamas is the worst. Right. Take that, Tim. Take that. I read, I have, well, I'm yeah. not pro Hamas. I'm just yeah. 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 I'm, I'm not, starting to get a little bit. I'm not, but I'm starting, what is, my what knees is that, are starting right? to shake a little bit from the Lebanese, okay? <laughs> oh, hey, not I'm 25% Lebanese, okay, over here. Watch out. What? The little Hezbollah's going to start oh. coming out inside there if you, if, you, if you keep pushing me over the edge over here. All right. Uh, Sarah? That's what I used to say. I'm 75% Lebanese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the lesbian joke. The lesbian dad it's a joke. Lesbian joke. People yeah. didn't get that. Yeah. Sarah, you're last. You're the worst. Uh, whoever said that you have to memorize a TED talk and you're not allowed to win <laughs> notes? <laughs> that person's the worst. That was an honest answer. Oh, that yeah, was good. Yeah, I'm sorry. Will, go ahead. Uh, well, Bill screwed this up because he chose actual murderers, yeah. so I, I, I can't really do that. Um, so not actually the worst, but the worst political figure. And actually, Sarah was very kind. She said she was going to steal my Tucker Carlson line, but she didn't. So the answer is, my answer is Tucker Carlson is oh, the I worst. I did steal it. You weren't yeah. But no, I heard it. But, but actually, the, 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 the specific thing is that Tucker Carlson is the answer to the question, does the world get better after Donald Trump is gone? Let's say gone, not dead. But gone. And the answer is there is always another one. Yeah. There is always another person who is that bad. And I think Tucker Carlson is that person. Oh, I suppose Sarah should be I should, I should be grateful that Sarah mentioned Sarah Palin as part of my mistake as uh -oh. opposed to hiring Tucker Carlson as a 23 year old. Yeah. At the <laughs> weekly <laughs> at the weekly oh, at the oh, weekly oh, standard oh, at the weekly standard, standard in 1995. Yes. <laughs> Good luck Peter. Congrats Peter Meyer you're off the hook. <laughs> I'll take all the blame up here. Right. These guys are blameless. 
<laughs> all right. Um, people ask us what our political views are still these days. Where are we? We're all lost. We're homeless in the wilderness. We get to criticize everybody. We get to be positive right now for once. We're not ending on this. We'll have a negative one. I want everybody, I want everybody to be able to snap their fingers and tell me who you would make the president. Will wants a pony. Charlie wants a new third party that's going to, you know, be in the middle and center and perfect. And who would you make the president? Snap your fingers. Liz Charlie. Cheney. Liz Cheney. Good pick. <laughs> Mona Sharon. Oh, gosh. Um, probably, this is boring, but Mitch Daniels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. boring. Really Tim Pawlenty was okay. saying. <laughs> we need to have the Mitch Daniels perspective here, but disagree. Yeah. A.B. I'd like to give it to Mitt Romney. Oh. oh. That's cute. Yeah. Not for me. Bill Crystal. Scoop Jackson, do I get to say no. that? No. <laughs> no. Harry, Tru Harry We're Truman. Harry Truman. Better alive. No, live person. Live with a person. Younger than Joe Biden, preferably. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Abigail Spanberger. Oh, good friend. There we go. Not a terrible answer. Sarah Longwell. You took it. Yeah, you took it. Oh, no, that's fine. Two votes uh, for Ab. Uh, Is I Ab in the audience tonight? Uh, I would do. I would go Gretchen Whitmer. Yeah. Well. I seriously thought I was going to be the only person up here to name a Democrat, so I'm really excited all these wokes went with me on this. Um, I, I'm going to take Mayor Pete. I've been a Mayor Pete guy from the beginning. I think he'd be terrific. Well, I'm surprised nobody picked Sarah yet. So I want to be. I want to be in the. I want to be in the West Wing. I want to be invited. So uh, you are no, absolutely I, not. I got it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so Sarah like, is going to be president, I, I, but you're not going to be invited. Uh, yeah. right. And I, I'm also intrigued to make my husband the president. I'd be a great first lady. But I'm going with Jared Polis. I prefer Jared Polis to Pete. Okay. Jared, yeah, Jared, Jared will own the libs every now and then. Pete's a little normy lib. You know, Jared sometimes. Jared opened the schools early. I was like, yeah, you go, you go, Jared. Um, okay, uh, let's see, what do I got here? Oh, in honor of Bill Crystal. Okay. Uh, I want everybody to tell us the thing that they are the most alarmed about. <laughs> what is the thing that you're the most alarmed about, Bill Crystal? You get to go first. I'm alarmed that other people are not alarmed enough. <laughs> that is a good one. That was a very good one. A.B., what are you the most alarmed about? Um, in keeping with the discussion of the Osama bin Laden letter, Charlie and I in the show last week were talking about you don't tell Americans, you know, young people who believe that things cost less under Trump, that their financial future will be better five years from now if he's president or three years from now if he's president, not Biden, that, that he keeps not us out of wars, but wars from happening at all. This is a perception that young people have, but also... What I mentioned on, on the podcast was that young voters are, if you, if you look at what's happening on campus with this anti-Semitic, you know, it's really like a pro-Hamas. I mean, they've been radicalized. And there's a direct connection to what the CCP is doing on TikTok that is, that is filtering, targeting our ill-informed young people with propaganda. And so that is so disturbing to me the drop in Biden's support in one month of 11 points among his own voters, the, the, the Osama bin Laden letter, I am so terrified of, of how checked out these young people are, how radicalized they are, and that I think they're wholly misinformed. And I do believe that they're gonna sit out the election. I don't know how you make them mad about abortion next year to overcome whatever it is they're reading right now and watching, but it's terrifying to me. I'm realizing I should have flipped the last two questions. We're gonna end on a down, that's okay. I have a, I have a I, I'll come up with something. I have four, I, have, I get to listen to four people be alarmed and then I'll end us on a high note of some kind. Mona, what do you learn? <clears throat> well, I will uh, underline what AB just said and I agree that's very alarming, but. Basically, um, the most alarming thing is that this great country uh, is tooling along, thinking that 2024 is just another election, and is it the price of eggs, or is it you know, how we feel about foreign policy, or is it somebody's too old, and God damn it, if we get this wrong, there won't be another election. You should have been last, that was good, Charlie. Well, I agree with all of this. I was going to say that we forget about Ukraine, but uh, everything is subsumed by how alarmed I am about the possibility of uh, Trump 2.0. Yep. And I have no idea how we're going to get through the next year. Yep. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, well. Drugs. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> they don't make what kind? Of, do you, are you carrying? <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going out after this. Just, we can talk up there. Mona and I know where a pot store is. <laughs> so the thing that worries me the most is um, something Brian Stelter said. He said, the average American does not want autocracy. And he's right. He's right about that. But what really worries me is that's not how it happens. No. It doesn't happen that way. It's not, it's not presented to you as autocracy. It's a slow process. One of the things that I learned doing a long project about Lindsey Graham for the Bulwark is <laughs> that <laughs> what I wanted to do was track one person over time. And what you see is the, is the frog boiling in water. It's, you, you end up supporting autocracy, but that is not the way you think of it, and that is not the way you go in. It is, an, it is, simple, it is a slow process, it is gradual, and it is not a thing, it is an absence of a thing, and what is the, it's the absence of rules. What Donald Trump has shown everybody is, what happens if I break all the rules? And he hasn't been punished for that, he's been rewarded for that, an entire political party has gotten behind him, and they don't care about any of the rules, up to and including him calling explicitly for the ex suspension of the Constitution. And it, it's just that, it's not just that the rules have been broken, it's that now everyone sees there is no penalty for it. And so this goes way beyond Trump. If Trump is out of the picture, there will be another one. There will be another demagogue after him and another one and another one. It doesn't end until we enforce the rules. Yeah, this relates to, Sarah, I'll let you finish. Um, this relates to my thing that I most fun about when I was talking to Bannon um, about his plans for the next time. Some of it's bravado and bullshit. But I, like, the, the thing that I keep coming back to that relates to the domestic terror threat is these guys are serious about, par about pardoning and releasing these prisoners. And, and they are not subtle about sending the message that we will pardon you too. Right. right. And that is, that is really the thing that, that alarms yeah. me the most about what they're doing. Sarah, um, I want you to close us out with what you're alarmed about, but also, I'm going to put this on a tee for you. What you're thankful for. Thanksgiving is coming up. So what are you alarmed about and then what you're thankful for? And that'll be the end of the show. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Oh, great, great, great. Uh, OK, so here's the, I, I've started saying this at all the live shows. I don't know about you guys, but like, it feels, do you feel tired at the idea of like a Trump-Biden rematch? Like, doesn't it just make you feel exhausted? OK, so. That is literally the, like part of the authoritarian playbook, right? Like part of it is they throw so much crap at you that like you get tired and you get tired of fighting back. And like at some point, like it was, this was the question of like how did Mike Johnson become the speaker? He just ex it just everybody was exhausted, right? Yeah. And so the thing that I want to say, and I say it every show, is that we cannot get exhausted, right? We have to constantly. <laughs> Fight for it like it is. You have to fight for it like the election will be your last. If I've just, I go to all these democracy conferences and there's a lot of people like, well, this is a long term fight and whatever. And of course, that's true. But if we lose this time, I don't think people realize like how different it could go. But what I'm thankful for. <laughs> nice, nice transition. Yeah, I was. Cool. It's you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because we have the best, I don't know, listeners uh, in the whole world. We love that you guys email us. We love all the support. We love that you fight with us, that you make fun of Tim and tell him that he interrupts too much, because that's true. And uh, we just love you guys so much, and we really can't believe we sold this thing out, and you're the best. Thank you all so much. I'll see you soon.